Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Krug and the AP Chemistry 2022 questions have just come out. So uh, I'm going to do my best to work through problem two so that uh, you can see how your 10 points might have been uh, allotted there. Just a disclaimer before we get started, uh, I am not AP, I'm not the college board, I'm just an AP Chemistry teacher. I've been successfully teaching AP Chemistry teacher, uh, teaching AP Chemistry to hundreds of students over the past 22 years. So uh, we'll see how you did on problem two. Uh, and like I said, some of the explanations may be a little different than what the AP College Board uh, gives out, but uh, I will certainly do my best. So here we have a question about methanol vapor, and it is decomposing to form carbon monoxide gas and hydrogen gas. In part A, the question asks, are the hydrogen atoms oxidized or are they reduced in the forward reaction? And specifically, it wants us to talk about oxidation numbers. And so for this one, you want to say that the hydrogen on the reactant side has an oxidation state of positive 1. Now the rule for that, just so you know, is that anytime hydrogen is bonded with uh, nonmetals, hydrogen is pretty much going to be a positive 1. And over here, hydrogen is uh, in its simple elemental state, so it's a 0. So what you want to say is that hydrogen is reduced. And the uh, explanation is that its oxidation state is changing from a positive 1 to a 0. So since that oxidation state is going down, that means that uh, it is gaining electrons and it is reduction. Part B, we're being asked to complete the Lewis electron dot diagram for carbon monoxide. And we want to obey the octet rule. So carbon, of course, has four uh, valence electrons. And oxygen uh, provides six valence electrons. So you want to have 10 dots here. And really the best way to draw that so that we have 10 dots and everything obeys the octet rule is going to be something like this. You have to have that triple bond in there. And it says show all bonding and non-bonding valence electrons. So you want to have something like this in order to get the full credit for part B. Now for part C, we have a thermodynamics question. This time we are given standard molar entropies for each of these compounds and we're being to ask uh, and we're being asked to calculate the delta S for this reaction. So once again, the reaction is uh, and I have it on the last slide, but it's CH3OH gas yields CO gas plus two hydrogen molecules, gas. And basically what you want to do is sum up all the uh, products, sum up all the reactants, and then take products minus reactants. And so the CH3OH is about 240 joules per mole Kelvin. And that's the only reactant that we have. So the total of the reactant side is 240 joules per mole Kelvin. And the carbon monoxide is 198 joules per mole Kelvin. Now the hydrogen, notice, is 131, but we have two moles of that. So we have to multiply that value by 2 since it's per mole. So when you multiply it by 2, it's 262 joules per mole Kelvin when you have those two moles. So when you add these together, the total of the products seems to be about uh, 460 joules per mole per Kelvin, if I'm doing my math correctly. And so once again, it's products minus reactants. So to find the delta S overall, it's going to be 460 joules per mole Kelvin minus 240 joules per mole Kelvin. And so when you do that, the answer that you're getting is about positive 220 joules per mole Kelvin. And so that's the, the answer that you want to give. Hopefully all my math is correct on this. For part two, it says calculate the value of delta G. And this is interesting because in the previous part of the question, it told us what delta H was up here. And so if we have delta H, and we have delta S that we just calculated, and we know the temperature, well, we can use the equation delta G equals delta H 
minus t times delta s to solve for that. So it, it, this is just a matter of a plug and chug into the equation. So we're solving for delta g. And delta h on the last slide there, or the last uh, part of the question, was 90.0 kilojoules per mole. So we'll do 90 kilojoules per mole. And then this is minus the temperature. The temperature is 375 kelvins. And then the delta S, be careful with your units here because we calculate this in joules per mole Kelvin, but the question says calculate it in kilojoules per mole. So you want to convert this to kilojoules by doing 0 0.220 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And of course, if you follow your, your units here, Kelvins will cancel. And so when you do the math on this, we have that delta G equals our 90.0 kilojoules per mole minus, if I multiply those by each other, I think I get 82.5 kilojoules per mole. And so when I subtract, my final answer seems to be a positive 7.5 kilojoules per mole. Once again, hopefully I did all my math correctly. And if so, that would be the answer for that one. Okay, so that's C part two. Let's, going on, let's go on to part D. This is an interesting question about equilibrium. It says, use information from this particle diagram to calculate the partial pressure of carbon monoxide at equilibrium when the total pressure of the equilibrium mixture is 12 atmospheres. Now, the problem t tells us that this is the equilibrium mixture. This is what, this is the ratio of particles and compounds and substances at equilibrium. Well, just counting these up, there are a total of, uh, there, there seems to be one, two, three, four, five, six of these H2 molecules. There are, let's see, one, two, three of these carbon monoxide molecules. And there's one of this methanol molecule right there. So that tells me that, you know, out of the, the full equilibrium mixture here, three tenths or three out of every 10 molecules will be carbon monoxide. So that means that if three tenths will be carbon monoxide and the total pressure is 12 atmospheres, well, all I have to do is multiply that out to find out what the partial pressure of carbon monoxide is going to be at equilibrium. So when I multiply that, I get an answer of about 3.60 atmosphere. So that's the answer that I got for part D. Now for part E, it just says write the expression for the equilibrium constant Kp. So once again, we go back to this uh, balanced equation that was way back here, and it's just products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients, and it's got to be in terms of Kp. So you have to write it, first of all, as an equation, got to have the Kp equals, and then it's partial pressure of the H2 quantity squared times the partial pressure of the carbon monoxide raised to the first power all over the partial pressure of the methanol, CH3OH. And so you've got to have it looking like that. It can't be brackets because that implies concentration. So if you have that, that's, that's a point for the Kp. Moving on to the next part here, we have F, uh, and this time we're going to have the same reaction, but this time at a different temperature, and we have the partial pressure of each species in the equilibrium mixture. And now it says use the information in the table to calculate the value of Kp at the new temperature. Well, this time we're going to use that same equilibrium constant expression that we just wrote earlier, except this time we're going to plug those numbers in. So once again, it's still, you know, CO times H2 squared all over CH3OH. So the Kp is going to be, you know, your CO is 4.2 atmospheres. Your H2 is 8.4 atmospheres, but that's got to be squared since there's a there's a 2 out here, all over 2.7 atmospheres in the denominator. So we're just plugging in to that same expression that you wrote in the last part. When you key this into your calculator, the answer I got was 
uh, I mean, l let's try to use two sig figs here, about 110, or if you want to write it in scientific notation, about 1.1 times 10 to the second. So there's our answer for part F. Now part G was an interesting question. Uh, this time this was a Q versus K question, and it says the volume of the container is rapidly doubled with no change in temperature. Uh, as equilibrium is reestablished, does the moles of CH3OH increase, decrease, or stay the same? And it says justify by looking at Q versus K. And to be honest, I would not have justified by Q versus K. Uh, as I was looking at this question, I'm thinking, all right, you double the volume. Well, that means that the that according to Le Chatelier's principle, the equilibrium shifts toward the direction that has more moles of gas, because more moles of gas take up more space. And that would be the right side. You know, because there's one plus two, you got three moles of gas on the right side compared to only one mole of gas on the left side. And that's, uh, in my opinion, that's a perfectly wonderful explanation, but they don't want you to talk about that. They want you to talk about Q versus K. And so the answer is going to be the same, but the justification is just different. And so the idea here is that since the volume is doubled, well, that means that every single partial pressure that you had in part F gets divided by 2. And so, you know, based upon the ideal gas law, that's what happens. If you have, you know, more volume, uh, pressure goes down. That, that's Boyle's law. So the K, or it's not a K, a K anymore, it, it, it's a Q, since it's not necessarily at equilibrium. And so all those pressures that we had before just get cut in half. And so instead of having, you know, 4.2 and 8.4 and 2.7, well, now it's going to be half of that, half of those values. It's going to be 4.2 squared times 2.1 all over 1.35. So your Q is going to be 27. Okay. Now we have to compare that to the K value. And so the K was 110. Okay. Q is, I would say, significantly less than K. And so since Q is less than K, that means that the equilibrium is going to go toward the right. You know, that little uh, Pac-Man uh, is going to be eating toward the right. And so since Q is less than K, equilibrium shifts right toward the products. And so that means that we will make more CO and H2, but we do that at the expense of CH3OH. So that means that we're going to decrease the number of moles of methanol, CH3OH. Okay, so that's the answer. So interesting question there. They worded it a little differently and they wanted a different justification than, than we normally talk about. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you got the points. Uh, and if you look at the points here, um, I would say, and I, I probably should give you a little point breakdown, uh, I would say that probably going to be one point for this one, one point for that one. Uh, for this one, I'd say uh, a point for this, a point for that one. So that gets us up to four. Uh, I would say a point for the 3 tenths and a point for the 3.6. I'd say a point for that expression right there. And how far does that get us to? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points. I'd say uh, one point for that expression right there. Uh, and I'd say a point for calculating Q and a point for the Q less than K, so we're going to decrease the methanol. So I hope that was, was what you got out of that. 10 points. Once again, College Board may give a little slightly different uh, point breakdown. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe, if you will, please, because I'm going to be releasing all these uh, solutions over the next couple days. Thank you for joining me. Uh, hope you get a five on that, that AP Chemistry exam or whatever your goal is. Thank you for joining me and hope you join me again on my channel where, where we can learn some more chemistry together.